Ella Caroli, the former coach of Romania, Nadia Comaneci, and Mary Lou Retton. He's now in charge of the United States team. The contest at the top, the USR, USSR, Romania, the USA, and China, promises much. The British story, sadly, in contrast with our men, has been disappointing. Sarah Mercer. who in uh, 1989 really set her hopes alive. She was 17th in the European Championships. That's good, solid stuff from Sarah. And in 1990, she actually won a world-class event. She was World School Games champion. Sadly, since then, though, she's been suffering from a knee injury. She'll be leading the uh, British team effort to improve on their 17th placing after compulsory exercises. minor adjustments throughout the routine but uh, this is the sort of start that the British would need fairly simple dismount now is that a sign that that knee is playing her up once again Going off straight away, it would seem for some attention, but uh, it would appear to the ankle, or is it the knee? Let's have a look at the replay, Mitch. Some of her acrobatic elements, two backflips, and for a layout back somersault. Good acrobatic combination there. There it is indeed, the knee, and 9.312 is her score. This is 14-year-old Rowena Roberts from Kingston in Surrey, from the Spellthorn Gin Club. confident in that double pipe back. combination top difficulty one and a half fifty back somersault immediately into a rebound front somersault confident performance there 14-year-old Marina Roberts. And part of the British promise for the future, I'm sure. Coach Colin Still, Rita Bielt there congratulating her. Young and talented. 9.712 was the reward. Now Laura Timmins on the floor. She's been the pick of the British team, trying to improve from their 17th place after the compulsories. She's 15 years old and is from the Park Reeking Club and in fact uh, 
coached by the wife of the national coach, Christine Still. tumbling and some beautiful touches there with choreography. Chris Still has obviously worked very hard and it's showing. Double tuck back finish. Received a tremendous response from the audience. Surely a good score. I would think, Mitch, uh, the best British performance that we've seen. Yeah, see, look at that. They're, they're delighted with it. So are the audience. <laughs> look at the power. She's really determined in her approach. Accelerates through the backflip into a full twisting double back. Good opener. Never mind the giant step. 9.762, and that's the top score amongst the British girls' team. But as a whole, the team seems unlikely to move up from its 17th position. The top six countries after the compulsory exercise. Here on Eurosport. Hello and welcome to day two of Eurosport's coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships taking place in Indianapolis, USA. The giant Hoosier Dome, the venue, and today our first look at the women. It's the women's team event. And the starting order in Group 3, which is the first one we just see. Hungary on both Korea on asymmetric bars. That's South Korea, North Korea on beam, and France on floor. These countries placed 9 to 12 at the end of the compulsory exercises. And the first competitor we see, Ingrid Stutz, who's first up on floor for France. Each team has six gymnasts, five of them count, and their totals are combined to form the team score. Oh, and that was a disaster for Ingrid. It was supposed to be a triple twist, a two and a half twist. She got totally lost and fell right out of the area. So she loses a tenth for coming out of the area and five tenths for the fall. This is exactly the thing which a team would not want to happen. Ingrid Stutz, the first up, so the five team members who are all waiting around the floor area for their turn to go, now all know that they can't afford to make a mistake at all, or France will be in real trouble. And very short there on that final double somersault too, but held it. combination to finish with, double twist into punch front, but unfortunately, having got lost on her triple twister opening, she was a little bit tentative about that final tumble, and the punch front actually went backwards rather than upwards and forwards. Pity about the fall in the opening run. Here it comes again. all over the place really did lose it
coach just reassuring her it's the very start of the competition and that can have a devastating effect Christina Molnar from Hungary the approach in the Arab Spring or the round off into the Urchenko vault with a full twist. It didn't lift very well. It can be seen here how she goes almost immediately into the twist without lifting and travelling. Little Henrietta Renaudi from Hungary. Their most experienced gymnast. Third in the all-around in the European Championships in 1990. Handspring, French somersault, Barani out. And she really was having problems trying to straighten out before the half twist. She hasn't grown that much, Monica. 17 years old now. 15-year-old weight when we saw her first. And she really should incur quite a heavy penalty for not straightening out before the twist. Really analyse it in slow motion. We can see the front and she's piked into the twist, which really makes the twist far less efficient. Generous score, 9.85. The women with two volts, and it's the best of the two that counts, so she's got a chance. Happy with that one? It did move over to the, to the right. I'm just being critical about the finer points of technique, and uh, the judges aren't really leaving a great deal of margin, despite the still landing for the better vaults that will come. Remember, the first vault was only 0.15 from a perfect score of 10. 9.9 9 the score, that's the one that counts. Cho Gyeong Hui from the People's Republic of Korea, North Korea, the two Koreas, Locked in battle here. Tenth South Korea after the compulsories and the eleventh North Korea. North Koreans did very well in their last world championships, finishing in seventh place. So at the moment they're trailing on their record. Lovely control in the back walk over to handstand, backward roll into flick flack and immediate jump. This is what beam work is all about, linking together the gymnastics, which is the dance element, and the acrobatic, which are the tumbling elements. The judges want to see combinations of the two types of skills linked together. Point five away the dreaded fall from the beam and that's a real blow because Cho Gyeong Hui the top seeded performer for the North Koreans she's up last she's the sixth to go so they expected her obviously to be their strongest beam worker or well, very nearly so sometimes some little tactical battles they might put their strongest up fifth and then put uh, their fifth up last to push the score further up. But there you can see 9.087. Jenny Roland from France on floor. I'm already having seen her compatriot fall on the opening tumble. So really she has now to psych up the rest of the team. Nice combination, but out of the floor, a badly judged run up. Compulsory three jump series.
And the double twist. Final tumble, double back. Nine point four eight seven for Jenny Roland. Double twist in the middle, two double back somersaults. Bernadette Ballage, handspring, front one and a half. Nine five two five for that. That was her second vault. Now at the end there of the first rotation, Hungary holding on to that first place amongst this group, but everything staying as it is. Rotation two, the French are on vault, Hungary, asymmetric bars, Korea beam, and the North Koreans on floor. Estavari from Hungary to the asymmetric bars. The second of four disciplines in women's artistic gymnastics. Oh, and a nice one and a half pirouette to recatch. A bad error there. That was supposed to be a handstand inward turn into the reverse hand grasp position ready for the forward giant. And even though she didn't come off the apparatus, it counts as a fall. Yes, collapsing onto it. As bad as coming off. Double tuck back finish. A big smile. Putting a brave face on it, but putting pressure on her teammates. And this is little Om Song Hui from North Korea to floor. Powerful full in back opener. And the three jump series, even though she's tiny at 14, she really has wonderful sense of dance. many gymnasts can fit that amount of skills on. She's so tiny, she managed to get the whip, two flicks, and then the double back. Not too long a pause before the final tumble. Double back piked and very nearly stepped out of the area. Well, she has the advantage of being able to fit a lot of tumbles across the diagonal, but of course the disadvantage of being so tiny, she has to cover the whole 12 meter square. That is in the rules. It specifies that all of the areas have to be used. That opening tumble run. It really does. and. Seven tumbles there. And the final pulled back, double back pike, just managing to stay in the area. Smashing tumbling though. There it is, 9.575. Lee Chun Mi. Team Spirit really running strong amongst the North Koreans. Oh, 
Oh, and that is beautiful. Good final tumble, very neat all the way through. The landings, very accurate indeed. And that really was a world-class floor exercise. Hungary top at the moment, Korea second, Canada third, France fourth. A disaster for South Korea. We'll take a break there, be back with rotation three in a moment. Welcome back. The gymnast warming up for rotation three of this second group. And the four South Koreans going on to floor have had an absolute disaster on beam. It's dropped them right out of the top 12. Incredibly bad scoring. The whole team coming to grief. Barbara Solon from France on A bars. Oh, meant to go into a full twisting giant there, but really stammered. The Jaeger to recatch. Difficult to drop to the bottom bar after that uh, movement. And now the final third of the exercise, winding up to the dismount. Double twisting fly away or back away. fall into the Jaeger Salto. And the end of the full twisting giant into the double twisting back away. One somersault, two twists. And this is little Kim Gwang Suk. The first vault already completed. Second vault, the best one counts. Full twisting Yachenko. Well, it was a little bit tatty mid-flight, but she certainly knew where the floor was on the landing. Chloe Maigre, France, asymmetric. Oh, nice Shaposnik over move there clear circle, piked up to catch the top bar. Kachev. Straddle back to handstand. Nice open shoulders before the long swing or giant circles. Good exercise. High dismount. Plenty of variety, but of course we will be seeing from the Russians two and three release and catch moves, so that will probably keep her out of the very high nines.
Esther Ovari from Hungary. Waiting to go on to beam. Little head spring mount. Front somersault landed nice and solidly. Very difficult move on beam. In a flick. Avari goes to the same secondary school as Henrietta Anodi, who has just recovered from injury. She looks uh, as though she's just managing to keep up with fitness, rather overweight at the moment. Solid, got through it all well, but was, as Monica was saying, struggling with all the movements, not quite the lift and the spring that uh, she would have if she had a little less weight and was just a little fitter. Little Ildiko Balog from Hungary onto the beam. major event for her. We haven't seen her in European or World Championships. Flickly out to one leg. And there, for example, that was a switch leg split leap into a second jump. That jump would not count as a connection, and this is where the minute amounts of marks are lost. Again, an intended combination, but it didn't really come off as such. spring flick flack double twist putting the flick flack before the double twist dismount increases the value of the difficulty and Hyong Hung to vault collapsing forward Count as a full fall. And straight to beam, Henrietta Renodi. Fifth in the 89 World Championships in Stuttgart in the individual final on beam. That was a difficult combination attempted because she was trying to go from the single full pirouette into the flick, half-twisting uh, Arabian like a Baktinska. Gain a layout, layout combination, that's hard. Devalue.
Manoli looking thorough, but not sharp. She's uh, beam hunting a little bit, looking down at the beam all of the time. Showing a little bit of anxiety. Such brilliant work. All that's missing is that air of confidence. Triple twist dismount, and she really did get round in the three twists. No, head, no doubt about that. Glad that's over. Henrietta Renaudi. Virginie Machado. France. Currently coached by a Russian coach, Sasha Zaruba, who uh, was responsible for the protege Olga Strajeva, Olympic Russian gymnast. And certainly signs of uh, Soviet influence in the body shape and tension throughout that exercise. Superb, says the coach. Well, they're all ready to move on to their next piece of apparatus in the next rotation, but some of the others haven't finished. 9.812 for Virginie Machado, but still at the vault. Cho Gyeonghui. Full twisting Yurchenko. And that on tape. 9.612, bettering her first vault. Jenny Roland. The last to go for France on the uneven bars. Nice transition from backward to forward, giant to Jaeger. Hatchev and the coach standing in. They're allowed on the stadium as long as they don't touch the gymnast for a few difficult moves. Excellent exercise and a good score to match, 9-7-3-7. So, after three pieces in this rotation, Hungary keeping their place at the top. Let's remember groups 9 to 12. Korea second, France third. Welcome back. There's the pieces of our apparatus for the final rotation. South Koreans really in despair. They have dropped right out of the reckoning, I would say, for going to Barcelona in the Olympics. Remember, this counts as the qualification tournament for the Olympics, where the top 12 go through. But the South Koreans have dropped right out of the reckoning altogether. On beam, Karine Boucher, now 19. Really has had a long career in gymnastics. And I think struggling with a little overweight and lack of fitness, Flick layout really didn't have the power nor the spring to rotate. Here very much in a team capacity. champion in 1986, 87 and 88 and she was fifth in the French championships this season what a good result in the America Cup finishing fourth and there are 
things in that routine where she looked as though she was really struggling, but she really did come back towards the end and put a very good double back dismount on. Not a happy lady, though. France really can't afford mistakes because they're one of the teams who are going to be vying for that final place in Barcelona. And that's where she came to grief. And that maybe could even cost them a place in Barcelona. And that's perhaps one of the things that's going through her mind. Lands the front somersault safely. Nine point one one two. So that would have been up at around nine point six plus. Maybe even nine seven. Ildiko Balog from Hungary. Front walk out, double back tuck. as a team ninth in the uh, 89 World Championships. So they're really trying to increase their ranking in the world this time. Well, she had double tuck opener, double pike in the middle, and obviously still young, got plenty of time in the sport, didn't quite have the power to produce a, a double somersault on the last run, but a nice way to go from a double twist to a punch front one and a quarter, so she does get increased value for that. Cho Gyeong Hui. The North Koreans finishing on the asymmetric bars. Custer handstand in reverse and the forward movement round there was called an endo. Nice high Jaeger, shoot after handstand. Kachev without any problem, nice and high. Notice the straight arms in the skills. And almost a plus there, because no coach standing in there for the Kachev means they're absolutely confident of it. You don't actually get penalised for putting a coach in. It's allowed, as Monica said, but uh, it must impress the judges when you don't feel that you even need to take any sort of precautionary measure at all. Early Jaeger somersault. And Cho Gyeong Hui immediately helping choke up the bars. Hungary's Christina Molnar to floor exercise.
that very difficult combination, two illusion turns, United, that's spinning in a needle stand, 360 degrees. Front walkout double twist. Just before she goes into the tumble run, huge cheers. But that's for what's going on on the beam at the moment. Nothing to do with Christina Molnar at all, and she has to keep her concentration. She does it well and finishes beautifully. Yes, I think the uproar in the audience is due to some of the work that has been produced by the North Koreans and the jeering because they don't approve of what the judges have given the score. Meanwhile, a slow motion repeat of some of Molnar's floor exercise. This is a really high, crisp double back. We must have a few points between competitors. Nine point six three seven. A good score, a clean routine. Now, Hungarian star Henrietta Anodi. The speed and rotation there in that double back with twist. Anodi at the moment, as we would expect, she really is the outstanding gymnast in this group, and she's the top individual scorer at the moment. The best eight nations, containing most of the best gymnasts, still to come. Triple twist. to finish that really did put the icing on the cake fabulous exercise from Henrietta Anodi very popular with the American crowd she hasn't grown much but uh, in maturity she really has developed a tremendous amount of power in her tumbling well you can see what they think of it enormous support in Indianapolis. Long way to go for some of these countries, but uh, a lot of people have made the trip on this occasion. And this is in slow motion, but the pace and the lift, that was a really beautifully executed uh, triple twist. Oh, and 9.937, a tremendous score, the highest we've seen so far, a nodi looking at the moment as if she might get into the medal certainly on floor she can perform like that in the individual phase of the competition she'll take some beating it's lovely for the hungarian team to finish on a high like that 
They're in first place at the moment. This group 9 to 12. We've got the top eight nations still to come. And there's a Nodi's sequence of scores. Doesn't matter so much in this team competition, but she'll carry those through with her to the individuals. Two nine nines, 9 9.85 her worst score, and that glorious 9.937 to finish with. A very happy young lady. And this giant stadium will fill up gradually, and by the last session, it'll be quite something. And from Korea, Kim Gwan Suk. And this is the little girl who stole the hearts of the German crowd at the World Championships in Stuttgart in 89 with that move, which she in fact failed to perform, fell off the bars in Stuttgart. We'll see it perhaps in slow motion. One and a half twisting giant into Jaeger, a combination I've never seen before. Well. <laughs> she just dropped off a beautiful exercise. Tremendous. Kim Gwang Suk. What combinations. She's the ideal size and shape to zip around those bars. And the American crowd, very knowledgeable. There's that move. Coming up now. Maranich. Maranich. Named after the Russian male gymnast. And there, easy as can be. And the Americans have immediately recognized the star. They were looking for a 10. 9.987, the top score so far. Two of the judges gave a 10s. Chloe Maigret from France. She's from Grenoble and she has a good fortune to be co coached by Romania's ex-Olympic gymnast, Teodora Ungariana, who is in fact Nadia Komanech's best friend. And this, a very important exercise for the French at the moment. They're looking as if they will finish in the top 12 and that means they'll be one of the 12 nations to qualify for the Olympic Games in Barcelona I'm sure that's their main aim out of these championships that was a superb combination it might not have been spectacular in that there weren't somersaults where she was leaving the beam but in contact with the beam on those chest rolls and backward roll to handstands, very, very difficult to centralize the, the body during the moves. Double flick into a double twist, but stuck. Really didn't pick up enough rotation. Nearly came to grief, but the score, 9.65, and that has to be good enough for France to qualify. There they are in third place. That means they'll finish at worst 11th when the top eight nations in front of them have gone. So a good result for them. Hungary top, North Korea second, France third. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the next group. Welcome back to Indianapolis, just about to start Group 3 and the countries in this group, Bulgaria, Australia, Spain and Germany and for Australia to be in it represents improvement of almost sort of unheard of proportions in gymnastics terms, Monica. Yes, it's, it's unbelievable. They've jumped up on the compulsory ranking from 16th to 6th and if they can hold on to that in the voluntaries, that is something very spectacular. Starting with one of the Australian girls on the uneven bars. This is Lisa Reed. First up for them. Oh. 
So she's their lead girl. She's their anchor gymnast. Good solid routine. Yes, the training and the determination shows that landing techniques very thorough because in a team competition, if on every piece of apparatus they lose a tenth, that multiplies to something like three marks, which will drop them from first to sixth place. Nice half turn. Lisa keeping straight arms for the majority, having to split the double back tucked, but the rest of the routine clean and with the required difficulty to get in the mid to high nines. And vaulting for Bulgaria, Gergana Pieva. She's first up for them, a relatively unsophisticated vault. Handspring front. But a vault that's been upgraded in difficulty. One and a half somersaults often is just so difficult to land that without pitching forward. Yes, because it's a blind landing, and the ideal answer is to put a half twist on the end, but that's another year's training to gain that extra tenth in tariff, to make it a ten tariff vault. Gergana now 18 years old. There's a score, 9.612, the first one counts. Andrea Drissler from Germany. Second up for the Germans. Competing as a combined team for the first time in the World Championships. The East Germans, of course, were one of the real forces in women's gymnastics, but have slipped a little bit in the last few years. Full twisting double back, half in the first and half in the second. Double twist. Very bad uh, double pirouette. Attempted it, dropped down onto the heel after the full spin. Looking down the East German team, Monica, a really completely new team. Yes, the ranking, the East Germans were fifth in the last World Championships, where the West were down in the lower rankings, so they're going to find it very hard to qualify for the Olympics with this team. Big step out of the area as well in that exercise. Nice to see more tall gymnasts though. Remaining in gymnastics, I think uh, Boginski has helped to do that. They are the big error. Only a tenth away though, one foot going out. As well, John, very difficult for the girls. Wolfgang Bonner has now taken over and it's difficult to get their act together. 9.55, a reasonable score considering a big error there. Sonia Fraga from Spain. New member of the Spanish team, youngster. And they will be particularly anxious to 
go really well here because the Olympics, of course, in Barcelona. And they'll tr receive tremendous support there. It would give a huge boost to the sport in Spain, but they've got to be there to do it. At the moment, looking good, coming in to these voluntary exercises in seventh place. So providing they keep it going, they should qualify comfortably. Yes, the Spaniards have really a difficult task because they want to blood in their youngsters and at the same time they want to make sure that they qualify for the Olympics in, on home territory. Tenth in the world in Stuttgart in 89 and they'll be eager to climb up and I'm sure they're capable of it. They've got some excellent gymnasts in their team headed by Eva Rueda. Sonia Fragas, little step back on the landing, but safely through that beam exercise. Nice to see the footwork uh, in slow-mo, but this really is an excellent example. Sonia's jumping ability, uh, that was one of the areas in which she showed particular quality. Ivanova from Bulgaria to Volt. Long, lean, elegant gymnast. Good vault there. Svetla Ivanova, Yurchenko. Good position. Straight, full twist off the top of the horse. When it's slowed down, you can see she pikes out of it a little bit, but basically held a good line. The Bulgarians just missing the top group. Came in fifth, but they were well behind China in fourth place after the compulsories. Germany's Kathleen Stark. gymnast 166 centimeters and that's a lot of leg to get round in a full twisting double back three leap series all of the gymnasts have to include that in their exercise even though it's a voluntary exercise there are certain types of elements which must be included Three compulsory tumbles, double twist punch front. Now she's got a leotard problem. Her leotard has crept up and the discipline not to touch that leotard must be incredible because if she does, she loses a tenth of a mark. But the minute she walks off the floor, she'll probably try to pull it down. Yes. On the left, Wolfgang Bonner, national coach to the German team, who was once national coach to the British under-12 team. And this is little Miriam Datena from Spain. She's second last up, only Eva Rueda to go, so ranking as their second beam specialist, probably. So there's always a little bit of tactic. It's dangerous to be absolute about that, but a new gymnast to us on the big competitions. Let's think of preparation for a gainer, yes. 
This girl beautifully conditioned the posture of the back leg in all of her jumps. And yet the 360 degree pirouette poses a problem. That fitted in with the floor music very nicely. <laughs> Lands a little bit short on the uh, double back chuck somersault. Wonderful leg line, but uh, needing to give attention to her upper body and head and posture, which matters very much on beam. This is the dismount, kicking the legs out slightly behind. Showing tremendous strength, though, not to fall. Nine point seven, really good score for her. Maya Christova from Bulgaria, chunky little gymnast. Handspring front with half twist. And that was on tape 9.775 for that second vault. Australia's Monique Allen. Monique, the most experienced member of the Australian team. Nearly overcooked that handstand. Another tall but extremely elegant gymnast. Ginger into undershoot. Full twisting giant. Double back tucks. Beautiful execution. They haven't got the difficulty, the big dismounts like the twisting double backs, but they're working into the double back from a twisting giant which upgrades. Good score there, 9762 for Monique. The catch of this the full twist into the double back tuck. Notice knees together, second somersault above the bar, and a very well anchored landing. Good control. Undergoing mental and physical preparation for landings with uh, Zhu Ping Jiang. Importing a Chinese coach there, the Australians, they really have a very adventurous and exciting gymnastics program going at the Institute of Sport down in Canberra. This Aneta Potempa from Germany, again a new gymnast in this German team, and yet she is going up last on floor. Pull him back out. Little lady with uh, some special charisma. Straddle jump punch front. Flick whip flick, double twist. example in this gymnast of what an important role the head plays in uh, floor exercises. She looks as though it's effortless, she looks as though she's enjoying it. 
head always held high to give an air of confidence. Finishing on a double back tuck. No more difficult than the rest of the German girls, but scoring well. Look, 9.775 because of the positive and enjoyable approach she had to her work. And that's not a bad result for your first piece of apparatus in your first really major championship. So, Bulgaria in first place, Spain second, Australia third, Hungary from the last group in fourth. We'll take a break there, back with rotation two in a moment. Welcome back. There are the pieces of apparatus for the second rotation of this group. And the Australian performance in these championships has amazed absolutely everybody. They're on beam in this rotation. That's Julianne Monaco. They really have had a lot of government funding put into a lot of their sports and they have done it in a way that's really unusual amongst uh, non-Eastern Bloc countries. They've set up an institute of sport and the gymnasts are actually resident at this institute in Canberra and do all their training there together. And I think that the Australians obviously have worked very hard, but in this round there must be at a tremendous psychological advantage because I would think the Spaniards and the Hungarians are so perturbed at the Australians' presence that it will affect their work. Because never has a team come from uh, down under. <laughs> in every sense of the word. Yes, you do get used to thinking only about those nations that are closest to you. They're the people you're locked into battle with and that you're used to doing battle with. Suddenly, when somebody leaps ten places, as it were, it does throw the, the whole uh, gymnastics world into some sort of confusion. Yes, even if it just disturbs their concentration, you know, and they say, did you see the Australian score? And they talk about them amongst themselves. Nice combination, that flick-flack, and then into it tucked to uh, Hans Sanchestro. <laughs> Safely through it. Money, Julianne Monaco. Yeah, she's come through the big test. Get through your beam and your first world championships and you can say you've achieved something. Yes, that tucked Corbett. Difficult. And a lot of the Australian girls, tall, not particularly built to be brilliant gymnasts, so it just shows the thoroughness of their training scheme. And I know for sure that they're under very strict supervision as regards diet and uh, getting to bed at a reasonable time. 9.65 for Julianne Monaco. Sylvia Mitova from Bulgaria to the asymmetric bars. Nice giant half turn. Double forward giant into Jaeger. This is really the innovation that we're going to see on the asymmetric bars. We've seen the giant circles in the recent catch, but traveling forwards between the bars. Double back tucked. There was actually a genuine Delchev in there, too. A somersault. But. Uh, I think the, the girls on uneven bars very often cheat. They do the half turn before they actually left contact with the bar. But she made the half turn and the twist. Kylie Shadwold onto the beam for Australia. It's 
switch leg combination split leap. Flick to two, straight back. And these girls really have an incredibly positive approach. A pair of hefty thighs, but uh, very strong on the landings. Nicely controlled on the 360 degree turn. Just that lovely hesitation before she put the front foot down again to show that she was in control. What I can't believe is their mental attitude. They are so positive. Flick to two, rebound, handstand, chest roll. Look simple, but mark my words, when you see that beam coming down towards your face, it's a pretty scary move. And so far, not even a wobble. Step back on landing, but not even a murmur of a wobble through that routine. And you can really see that that team is on a charge. They must have come here knowing that they were going to improve a great deal on their rankings if they went well, but I don't think even they can probably believe what they're on the verge of achieving for Australian gymnastics. No, not in their wildest dreams, because uh, when you put things on paper and say what we're capable of doing at the maximum, this really is uh, its coming true. Anke Schoenfelder from Germany. 9.525 for her first vault. It's the best two that the best of the two that counts. But she can lift that mark. Handspring front one and a half with twist. Sorry, with no twist, I bit with in a pike. And again didn't manage to hold on to that landing. Very difficult to stop the rotation when you're in a pike. Yeah, she really needed to open out from the pike and have the feet on the floor in front of the hips. But her feet were underneath her hips on the landing. That caused the run forward. Schoenfelder, one of the original East Germans. 9.562 for the vault. Gabby Vela, her second vault. Same vault, she managed to stop the rotation, 9.712. And the gymnasts are already warming up for the third rotation. And the Australians still tucking tight in there behind the Bulgarians. Just about, just over one point, and more importantly for them, they've got a six point, a point six gap between them and Spain. There for the third rotation are the countries and their apparatus. Australians to floor now. Lisa Reed. They really need the adrenaline running high to give them that extra bit of energy. In a team championship, this is where the greatest amount of marks are lost for minor errors on landings.
managing to get through the routine cleanly. The length of leg Lisa has very difficult to provide the energy required for the high double somersaults. So favoring twisting. But anchoring for landings on the somersault. Again, that positive attitude coming into play. They really are holding on to everything. 9.587 for Lisa. And that really was a perfect example of a solid performance. Sylvia Martinez from Spain to vault. Full twisting Yurchenko. In 1983, when Natalia Yurchenko first performed this vault, and we're so excited by it. So in fact, uh, Sonia Fragas, again, a little Spaniard. Christina Panajotova from Bulgaria. Yurchenko mount onto the beam. Nice and confidently done. Big risk move to start with. It can all come to grief there, but she's off now to a flying start. Little wobble there on the pirouette. Lovely combination of Arab Spring, Flick, Straight Back. I can remember back in 1985, there was only one gymnast in the World Championships who was 166 centimetres tall. This time, there are over a dozen. And I think that uh, Boginski, being tall and surviving as world champion, really has filled tall gymnasts with confidence. Tana Jotova, losing point five. Bold dismount, plenty of attack there in the Arab Spring double back. Australia's Michelle Telfer. And again, the attack very evident, not particularly difficult tumbles, but they really are making sure that everything is done to the best of their ability. 
Yes, sir. Michelle Telfer, 9.637. Scoring well. And that's why Australia are up in second place and only the top four nations still to come in this team championship. We'll be back with the last rotation in just a couple of minutes. Catch the world's best in gymnastics. The Indianapolis Gymnastics World Championships. Gymnastics. The fourth rotation. And Australia unlikely to come completely to grief on the vault. So it looks as if we're going to see a sensational finish for them in this team event. Ruth Roland from Spain on the asymmetric bars. Innovative move there from the forward giant. Not particularly difficult, but different. Already having done a Jaeger, then her catcher, the second of the releasing catches, and double whip. Difficult to tell from the angle whether it was a whip or a slight pike, but nevertheless, a high rated, uh, highly rated dismount. Julianne Monico from Australia. Handspring front. Only a 9.9 .9 rated bolt, but she stopped it so well. These girls really must have worked so hard because to land a handspring front with just the one foot behind that doesn't actually incur a deduction you should never get a 10 with that type of landing but uh, perfect timing putting the feet in front of the hips on landing and really what the australians have done here an example to the other teams on how to set about team gymnastics do what you do really well. Svetla Ivanova from Bulgaria. The Bulgarians finishing on floor. They competed in the Olympic order as the top qualifiers in this group. And the particular forte of the Bulgarians, the choreography on their dance. touch of the Boginskias about even over not a little bit in her gymnastics but more in the way that she just uh, blows away the little lock of hair that keeps falling down over her forehead in the middle of a performance she really has superb uh, mobility around the shoulder and hip area which means that she has so much choice of dance elements Gymnasts who aren't supple really have to pick and choose which elements they can use to link up their big tumbles. Ooh, big one. Triple twist to finish. And she really spun it. I didn't think she was going to have the height to get round, but she travelled very quickly. Just look how fit she is. I mean, she's not even taking a deep breath. Incredible fitness. That's the first tumbling run, the whip back somersault in the middle, and then the double pike. The difficult tumble at the end. 9.75, that's good scoring.
Eva Rueda from Spain, the girl who's done so much to promote gymnastics in Spain by her performances in recent years. And poor Eva looks so large and muscular in comparison to her tiny teammates. But I think, undisputedly, one of the hardest workers in the world. Famous double whip dismount. Ava, in fact, I think this today or tomorrow is her 20th birthday. She's been on the international scene for five years. Fourth in the European Championships in the all-around competition in 1990. And won a bronze medal on vault. She looks very big in comparison to her teammates, but you see her next to anybody else and she's really a little way for herself 9.887 and to floor Bulgaria's Silver Ma Silvia Mitova oh a nice opening double back straight really wasn't whipped at all for a tiny girl plenty high enough in back very nice High double back tap punch front. Perfect timing. Bounced out of it with no problems at all. And that at the end of her exercise, making it that much more difficult as she was getting tired. And a tremendous score for Mitova. 9.9, .9, the floor exercise of her life. Who would have imagined using that type of piece of music came off so well? Elena Romero from Spain to Isometric Bars. Quite a simple routine, but nice technique on her giant swinging, really some catch at the beginning and uh, double twisting back away. That move there is in the set exercise and any gymnast who has to use it in the voluntary is really giving away the fact that her vocabulary of movements on the asymmetric bars isn't quite as it should be. Yes, I think the Spaniards clearly leading for Barcelona. 9.662. And just look at that face. Determination there from Joanna Hughes. 9.662 for the first vault already scored. Even the flying technique out of the twist apparent. Not coming off brilliantly. And watch, this is what I mean. The Arab Spring up, the full fly open to sail to the floor with a straight body, but just really undercooked. 9.7. 
And they are having a ball. And they really can hardly believe their joy. It is unreal. Just look at the Australians. I think the rest of the world of gymnastics will be just as shocked as they are. Hanke Schoenfelder from Germany will have to go on beam for them. And the German team essentially from the west now. Anker was in the uh, Democratic team before. So undoubtedly the most experienced of the gymnasts. East Germans finished fifth and West Germans 18th in the last World Championship. So as a united team, they're really doing pretty well. Yes, you might expect a combined team to be stronger than any one part of the two, but you have to take into consideration that the training methods, the amount of money pumped into it and so forth has changed completely from that which used to go into the East German team a few years ago. Hanke Schoenfelder scoring 9.2. And that the end of the group, the fourth rotation, now complete. The Bulgarians in first position. Australia, look at them. They've done it. They are going to be in the top six in the world. The top four nations qualifying through from the compulsory still to come in a separate group. But what a story that is for Australia. We'll be back with that final group in just a moment. Welcome back to the final group, the Soviet Union, the United States up there in second place in front of their home crowd, Romania third, China fourth, the big four in women's gymnastics, and the United States, the shock nation to be in there in that position, challenging the Soviets. And you can expect every single USA performance to be greeted. This is Kalina now from the Soviet Union on vault. Yurchenko, full twist, and lands it, as you'd expect from the Russian team, superbly. Nice double twist. One, two to us, yes. Missed it first time round. It looked so easy. I thought it was only one. Natalia Kalinina. And 9.9 .9 for her first vault. And to me, that looked uh, much more dynamic, crisper vault altogether. Still rolling off the top, not lifting it quite so much. In slow motion, not quite so different. But in fast motion, it looked more explosive altogether. And the second one, not quite as good. She was just that little bit lower. It was more explosive, but 9-9, nine, nine, the mark that counts. Hilary Grivich of the USA 
play starts on the asymmetric bars. And this one of uh, Bella Caroli's protégés. Oh, a nice phase catches. Caroli is excited as ever, jumping around in the background, watching with enthusiasm. Full twist before the dismount. Beautifully landed, Bella Caroli, the former coach, there he is, of the Romanian team, the man who became famous alongside Nadia Comaneci, who then defected to the USA and has risen there to the position of national coach. Galieva from the Soviet Union. Nine eight five for Rosa Galeva's first vault. Handspring front with pike and half twist. And 9.877 for Galeva's score. Tatiana Lysenko. Double twister there. Betty Aquino from the USA onto the A-bars. Nice tight work from Betty. Oh yes, lovely combination from the Jaeger from the forward giant into the undershoot to handstand. Betty, 15 years old. Coping there with a second release and catch. Kachev, forward giant. Half twisting back flyaway dismount. And you can hear the crowd getting behind their team. Lysenko's second vault, 9.95 for that first one. Lysenko. Two twists. Now, was it better than the first? 9.95. Hard to beat. A couple of judges gave her tens on that. She really did have wonderful explosion from the top of the horse. She completely finished the twist when she landed and there wasn't a murmur on the landing. She calmly gets on with it. The vault is over. She has to prepare for her next piece. And this uh, Shannon Miller from the United States, the shock to the world, and I would think also to Bella Caroli, because she, the next highest, the, the highest scoring American, after the compulsory tying, in fact, with Christina Bontash, and beating Caroli's own gymnast, uh, Kim Schmetzel, which really will be a surprise to the Americans. She's only 14 years old, the youngest in the American team, and just coping with this kind of pressure unbelievably. Full twisting, double back. It's easy. You just go out there and enjoy yourself. What's all the fuss about? She really did seem to enjoy it. Lovely free-flowing exercise. There's the catch of... Giant circles now so much a part of the asymmetric bars exercise and the full twisting double back to finish with. And that dismount was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I've seen 
a half in, half out performed, but not really as well as that from any other than uh, the American, the uh, Russians. That was brilliant. 9.9 a score. The crowd going wild. Tatiana Gutsu won the Moscow News Tournament, the biggest invitation international in the world this year. I'd really like to see that vault again. Hardly looked as though she touched the apparatus at all. It looked as though she flew off the top. See? Only just, just touched two twists and traveling back quite badly on the landing. But loads of power for such a slim girl. Yeah, she probably didn't get quite as much purchase on the top of the horse as she really wanted. It kept her going too long in the vault and she needed a little more drive off the top. It was good, but she can improve on that. 9.887. I thought she had a quick look sideways as she came off the landing mat, the crash mat. I think she knew that she hadn't really got that one right. Moved it to the side still, but uh, she really has got loads of power, and it's difficult to judge unless you're there in real life to see the... the height and uh, length of it but for viewers it's difficult to appreciate the amount of power put into these vaults from these girls you know, I suspect she was saying I was a little bit lucky on that one not to fall over better score for her second vault 9.925. He has improved that on the landing. And this, Kim Zmeskal. Last to go on the asymmetric bars. First release from Katja Ginger, second Kachev. Double back whip, just stepping back. Interesting to see that Bella Caroli put his own gymnast up last, anticipating the score to be higher. We've seen Shannon Miller score 9 9. I wonder if Kim can better that. Shukovitina, Shusovitina, Oksana Shusovitina of the Soviet Union. Sixteen-year-old, powerful, winner of the Goodwill Games last year. There's a lady who's grown up in a year. Yang Bo from China. Altogether, the moment you look at her face, much more ladylike. She was really a little kitty when she started. Full in, oh. back out, hiked, coming to grief on the first tumble. Just like she did in the World Cup, looked like winning the event and went to floor, and that was her Achilles heel. Compulsory floor exercise was 
very difficult, requiring power and strength, and she scored 9.887, stayed up with the best on the, on the compulsory. So really, I think it's, uh, it's nerves. She's not coping with her nerves well enough when the pressure's on in her voluntary exercise. Well, that's a terrible start for her, because remember, this team competition also counts towards the qualification for the top 36 individual, and she would have been obviously hoping to qualify as one of the three Chinese girls who can go forward into that, and now that must be in jeopardy. Such a great pity, because there really isn't any shortness of power She's got both ankles rather heavily bandaged, so maybe she's nursing some ankle injuries and really anticipating the landings, anticipating the pain, and just chickening out of proper landings. One and a half twist middle tumble into a double twist. Shouldn't look too disappointed so perhaps she is nursing ankle injuries and uh, anticipated that she may have a fall yes they'd still want her there in the team if it could come off but look at her score 8.637 and there really is no way back from a score like that in the team event the other five can compensate for her but in terms of her own qualification, it all counts. Li Yifang. Full in back, straight in the first, and uh, Pike second somersault. Well, the Russian coach, Alexander Alexandrov, that he thought that the Chinese were improving so rapidly he considered them to be the main rivals to the Russians. But they've already, as so often happens in the biggest championships, made quite a lot of mistakes. They've got the grace, they've got the power, they've got the skills, but putting it all together appears at the moment to be beyond them, men and women. But I think in fairness to the to the Chinese, John, they go for an extra dimension in everything, and so to them, the risk is far greater. They go for perfection in every single area, and this, you know, they go for broke, and if it doesn't come off, then they miss out. Really climbed there. Good height there in that final double somersault. It does give it very much that extra elegance, First tumble, full in, back out. That's two somersaults, so the full in the first. And uh, the second one, just a simple back somersault, where the name comes from, full in, back out. Double tuck. It's the final tumble. A 9.85 for her. And our first look at Svetlana Boginskia. Still the queen of world gymnastics. Mm. 
and with the added height, just watch the lift from the apparatus. She does phase the takeoff. Still clears her landing, but we'll forgive her. Everything else is beautiful about her. And 9.95. For number 452, Svetlana Boginskia. And here comes the second. Can she improve it? And she did just that, 9.962. Now, well, perhaps her greatest rival in the individual going for Romania Christina Bontash couple of new faces in the Romanian team. Panda Hadarian and Lavinia Milosavici. Christina Bontas with Eugenia Popa, Mirella Pasca and Maria Nekulitsa. Last up for them on beam. Complicated little change leg leaps there. Switch leg split, split leaps. Beautiful landing. Absolutely nailed it. An immediate smile. 9.95, tremendous mark. That'll do her confidence a lot of good. 9.95 for Christina Bontash. The Romanians could well lose their traditional almost now second place to the USA. They've been, sorry, to the Soviet Union. The USA trying to edge them out of the silver medal position, holding on to silver at the moment. We'll take a break there. Welcome back. Rotation to Romania just narrowing the gap on the United States a little bit in that first rotation. Their total team score 49.524 for their five beam exercises. The United States 49.324 for their five asymmetric bar exercises. This time. The Romanians move to floor, and Eugenia Popa is the first to go for them. A bit short on the landing on that uh, full in back out. Again, you're hardly recognizable from the 1988 Olympics where she was a skinny little girl with short black curly hair.
fabulous routine. Great uh, finish there. Third time we've seen it, double back, tucked into punch front, and Eugenia really did it justice. Adrian Goriak, coach now of the team, but of course the girls aren't together at Deva. They're all now living at home and traveling in to their respective clubs. This is the final tumble or dismount, as we refer to on floor. Nine point eight two five for Popper's floor. The Americans on beam, Hilary Grivich. Flick and two straight backs. Good solid landings on the end of the first big combination. Funny little tuck back to one leg, but uh, her weakness has always been extension and neatness. So really she has to try and select movements that don't give away her weaknesses and betray her faults. One of Caroli's kids. Flick, double tuck, and not a perfect landing. They're really aiming to hang in there and keep in that silver medal position. Fourth in the 89 World Championships. Rosa Galieva from the Soviet Union. And there on the asymmetric bars. Straight into the catcher. Nicely through into a giant immediately from it. Little crisis there. Have to work hard. Ye uh, the Ginga. Excellent routine. Very novel uh, beginning. Doing the forward giants and the Kachev the opposite way, not in between the bars. There you see the Kachev going out backwards rather than towards the bottom bar, which makes it easier. And that was the crisis point from the clear circle to handstand. This, the dismount, lovely half in, half out. Galieva score 9.925. And that's Tatiana Lysenko. Just completing her final preparations. Last bit of chalk as the bars are made ready. Oh, nice. Shepard's Nikova, that's clear circle. Pike to catch into pirouettes. Jaeger to undershoot. To Stalder. Stalder in the next compulsory exercise, so Russians favouring it. Inward flippers with a half twist dismount. Gets full two tenths bonus for originality on that.
Shapiznikova to catch into the pirouette and straight into that upstart to take her into the high bar series. Yang Bo's second vault. She scored 9.675 for the first one. Yochenko with twist and again really sort of collapsing on that. She, I think, certainly, as we can say, have has injury problems around the ankle. She is favoring it all the time. Shannon Miller. Nice Grosdeva handstand walk over. Coached by Stevie Dunn at Dynamo, and Stevie is on the floor with Bella Caroli. So Shannon has her own coach with her. Unbelievable maturity for a 14 year old. Lovely combination. Four linked back tumbles, two flicks. Uh, Layout and then a flick. Every successful move being cheered by this enthusiastic American crowd. They haven't had a time like this since the 84 Olympics when they roared their team and Mary Lou Retton into the medals. Oh. What class! Full twisting double back off the end of beam. She just like shelling peas to her. <laughs> it is so easy. She's really enjoying it. Flick. Lay out back, lay out back, and then flick again. Four in combination. And of course, if there's likely to be any political, uh, political outcry against Bella Caroli because he's such an outspoken man, they aren't likely to penalise Shannon Miller because she isn't, in fact, coached by him. We we'll hate to think of these possibilities, but uh, they are likely to happen. Caroli constantly bragging that the American team were going to beat the Soviet gymnasts. 9.95 she really is having a great day come the big occasion and she's equal to the test she certainly proves she's got the temperament Christina Bontas 9.95 for her first piece of apparatus on the beam and the Romanians now on floor this is cheeky we've got an American medley to just try and attract the crowd and get them behind her better to work to it than uh, Bontage really because she's a pert, fast worker and she has a tremendous following in the States. Slightly cheated, stepping out of that double throw it to the side instead of in front.
a cheer not for the Bontash performance but the Americans of course another beam exercise completed safely and lost in that cheer really was uh, the quality of Bontash's last tumble it was a full twisting double back and she was she stood out of it without any problem at all really fantastic routine fast full of variety not just the tumbles were interesting but the dance in between single twist there in the middle of that and then a double tuck back at the end Chance to see a couple of performances we missed as the gymnasts move on to the third rotation. But on tape now, Fabiana Gutsu, her bow's performance for the Soviets. Nice combination of into the ginga, half twisting giant, full twisting giant. There, the stalder on the bottom bar. Tatiana Strong, uh, Kachev, I really don't need to see why she needed support on that. It was so adequately performed. Oh, yes. And a sailing straight in, pike out. What a score, 9.975. Brilliant stuff. And Zmeskal on the beam. Again, one we missed. Chance to see it. There's so much going on with four pieces of apparatus being worked at any one time. It's impossible for the cameras to be live on every gymnast. Very low on the last two tumbles there, but landed them. Yes, Mezcal puts me in uh, mind of Mary Lou Retton, actually. She was trained very, very hard, and she's getting rather chunky around the legs, which really reduces the aesthetic appeal of her work. She has the power, but she's uh, not using it on the lift on her elements. And in America, everybody knows about Smescal, but very, very few know of the existence, practically, of Shannon Miller. So the Americans will be very surprised by this result. Arab Spring double tuck. And a great score, 9.95. Balakaroli. And Svetlana Boginskia finally from this second rotation onto bars. Disputedly beautiful work, but really 9.962, difficult to justify when we're seeing so much variety on release and catches. So the Soviet Union are way out there in the lead. And it's so far clear already one can say that they've made certain of the gold medal. The United States and Romania, though, having a battle royal, they scored exactly the same in that rotation, 49.524 to both countries. So the positions at second and third stay the same. Welcome back. 
the third rotation halfway through this women's competition and really the Chinese falling a little bit behind and the Russians well ahead so the big battle is between the USA and Romania for silver and bronze Michelle Campi from the USA First error on the first tumble, stepping out of the floor area. But the Americans have improved so much. I think there was a time when we used to accuse the American crowd of being partisan and biased towards their own, but I think that the boot is somewhat on the other foot. And I think the Americans deserve absolutely every thousandth of a point that they're earning. And on occasions, a little more. Yes, you feel they've got to put in a big performance away from home because a lot of people believe that the American crowd being as loud and enthusiastic as it is really gets to the judges more than people in any other country but they are producing some beautiful work they've got strength in depth Well, Caroli is very outspoken, and I think that at times he perhaps doesn't handle his, uh, contain his temper quite as he should. But one can't help but see his point. This work is tremendous, and Boginski just scored in the very high nines for a routine that only just had the maximum difficulty. Banda Hadarian, 9.762 for her first vault. Full twisting Yurchenko. A pity that she didn't quite hit the horse at the right angle because it had the potentiality of a brilliant score, but it got 9.85. Oh, lovely combination. Back sole circle, check giant. That's in a dislocation position into a Kachev. Lovely work. Lily, now 16 years old. Incidentally, A bars her favorite piece of apparatus and it shows. Well, the Chinese have given us some really original work over the years on the asymmetric bars the great innovators in women's gymnastics there and 9.95 for Lee Lee showing it again beautiful work Boginskia to beam She truly is a beautiful, elegant gymnast and makes the most of absolutely every skill, but also very, very clever at hiding her inadequacies.
He's creeping around in that full spin, almost hiding it in the routine and not highlighting it. But to date, not a hint of a wobble, not even on the landing. So positive. Only a double back, no twist, but hits the floor, snatches the heels together. No mistakes, 9.95. A routine worthy of a world champion. And also on tape, Kim Zmeskal's floor exercise. Lovely. Oh. Three whip somersaults in there, building up the speed. It was tremendous. Still looking fresh coming into the third tumble and she's never stopped for a minute and a half. Double back, pike in, tuck out. Nailing every landing. Nice little shape to finish. And this really is true world-class gymnastics from the Americans. Exploding into that in her score. Getting the reward she deserved, 9.95. Caroli, a very happy man indeed. And the USA, look at that, absolutely level with Romania at the end. Equal second at the end of the third rotation, everything to go for. We'll be back with the fourth round in just a few moments. So we're building up to an incredible climax in this women's team competition. It's interesting, the Soviets way out there in the lead at the moment, but we could be seeing the beginning of the new order in gymnastics because if things continue as they are going in the Soviet Union, there's not going to be the same money poured into gymnastics as there has been in the past. You could even have these gymnasts competing for different countries. So a great battle going on between the USA and Romania for the silver medal. And they're absolutely level. The Americans being outscored by the Romanians, 49.349 to 49.562 on that last one. And that's Michelle Campi with her first vault. Just glancing down to her coach for a word of advice on that. Yurchenko with a puffed full twist. The Romanians finishing on Abar's Nikolitsa. That's great, Monica, to see real competition in this team event right into the final rotation for the medals. Yes, it, uh, it really is the Romanians fighting for uh, a place in the medals. In the last visit to America in 79, the Romanians were fighting for gold against the Russians and that's when they became world champions. Nikolitsa finishing there with a high full twisting double back. Campia's second vault. Excellent. Unusual to see the uh, puck shape, which is a tuck with not quite the knees tight into the chest. It's a combination between the tuck and the pike, and it's possible to twist in that shape. 
but selecting that to perform it well rather than come in with straight legs and injure her ankles. Michelle Campy, it is better. 9.75 goes up to 9.787, so that's the one that counts. Shannon Miller. 9.9 for her compulsory vault. And here she goes. Tremendous aggression, just a little bit low with the chest on landing. So from the USA to Romania, Christina Bontas takes up the challenge. There goes the catcher. Off goes the coach. Round to the other side. But this, John, nice to see because once upon a time the Romanians would have died sooner than had a, a coach on the podium to support them. But now, in the essence of safety. Shannon Miller, 9.937 for that first vault. Let's see whether she can get higher on the second flight. Still a bit low as she landed, but that's to be expected too. At her age, if she had tremendous arm strength as well, I'd wonder what she'd been doing. <laughs> don't think this was quite as good as the first. I think a first score should stand. For Yurchenko, the round off before hitting the board and the full twist as she comes off the top of the horse. No, you're absolutely right, Monica. 9.925 the second one, so she has to settle for a mere 9.937. Another great mark. What a competition she's having. Mirella Pasca from Romania to the A-bars. And they really have to try and keep their cool. They can see the Americans psyched up on vault, cheering pretty loudly for each other. The Ginga somersault. And there's the catcher coming back over the high bar towards the bottom bar. Full twisting double back to finish. Mirella Pasca, her nerve holding. Cause Pasca, a great uh, bar worker, this girl, won a silver medal in the World Cup in Brussels last year. Now on vault, the Americans continue their fight for silver. Kerry Strug. Struggling a little to get round there. She's landed in a look what Caroli thinks of it. Go get him. Go get him, he's saying. The Americans have just opened a little bit of a lead up over the Romanians. And they are ecstatic. Just look at Caroli. He's saying one more to go there. Go get him. They've got one more to go. Kim Smeshkal yet to vault for the Americans, and she is their best vaulter. You've got to do it, Kim, they're all saying. And 9.925 for Kerry Strug. All eyes on the scoreboard, and the Americans are in second place at the moment. And Melissa Vici to A bars. Oh, nice combination. Beautiful work. We'll see it, I'll explain it when we get to slow-mo. Oh, God. And a disaster for the Romanians at exactly the wrong moment. The Americans not cheering that, even though it's so close. It almost looked as if they were cheering the fall, but I can assure you it wasn't so. But there, Milosovic's nerve going. And that... Really, I think, must have put it into the hands of the Americans. If their best vaulter now holds up, Zmeskal. 
they're going to be taking the silver medal and she looks as calm as can be about it all she's already got 9.962 in the bag and in fact I think that does it so what can she produce on the second vault well that's the smartest vault to date shoulders up straight legs not a murmur on the landing not a murmur and they are ecstatic yep they're celebrating the silver medal they know they've already got it confirmation already they've got the silver medal and Bella Caroli now you'd never think that he started life in Romania totally and utterly committed to Uncle Sam he has worked his Houston club and the marks just come up she scored the first 10 10 to Kim's Mescal from the USA just to celebrate the silver medal and the whole arena going absolutely spare I think the um, first aid people must have gone near. I think that they thought that Bella Caroli might keel over. <laughs> Another look at this fault. The twist, and my goodness, she got the twist round so early. She was absolutely complete on the twist before she started to go into the dismount. It was a beautiful vault. It was, and the great thing to see is that the girls are just as ecstatic. I mean, Caroli absolutely lives his sport. He's a real hard worker. Betty Aquino, when she went to his club, she said, I thought I was going to die on the first day's training. Chance now, after all that excitement, to see Boginskia's floor exercise. The Soviets out there in front they've already made sure of gold even without Boginskia going up last but let's see what she's added into her floor always a masterpiece this new music yet again it really is like a modern ballet isn't it Monica she is beautiful She really has had the mileage from the judges for her elegance. Yes, the, the tumbles certainly aren't extraordinary by any way these days. Lands them superbly. She's got the difficulty in there. But they're all a little bit low. She just does, as you said, on the other pieces of apparatus, cover it so well, doesn't she? She really does. It's wonderful, absolutely beautiful gymnastics. But in comparison to some of the other performers, she really doesn't deserve to get the marks she gets. But the strength of the Soviet Union coming out yet again. Boginskia, the crowning glory. She almost looks like a sort of mother figure to some of the other youngsters around her now. And 9.962, that gives her the lead in the overall individual ranking so far. We'll take her through as the leader into the top 36 competition. And the bronze medalist, Romania, they'll be, I think, 
a little disappointed, but it's not really been an easy two years for them, training-wise or anything. Look at their faces. You'd think they were certainly without a medal. In many ways. I think the Romanians have done well to stick in there and take the bronze. They're well ahead of China still. The big one, two, three in women's team gymnastics, the Soviet Union, the United States, and Romania. Getting that vital point three ahead on the final rotation. Remember the USA and Romania absolutely level after three pieces of apparatus. China taking fourth, Bulgaria fifth, and that wonderful result, Australia there on the top six leaderboard when they could hardly have expected to be in the top ten. And I think that uh, Yangbo was definitely injured and that perhaps cost the Chinese team a medal. There's the top 12 placings, France getting into 11th, Canada 12th, they are the other qualifiers for the 1992 Olympics. The top 12 teams going through. And here are the individual results. Boginskia out there at the top. Christina Bontas in second place. Gutsu third. Shannon Miller, the top American, fourth. Lysenko fifth and Anodi sixth. But look at the difference between those scores. That's great to see. We're going to have some individual competition. Point four between the lot of them, and you can make that up. And in fact, uh, Kim Zmeskal also up there at 79 plus. Wonderful to see it all that tight at the top. And brilliant to see in the top five places that there are four nations. It's not Soviet Union all the time. Americans doing particularly well, the Romanians featuring in the top 16, 17. China's Li Li getting in there well. Still at 78. Yes, the Sanders Yangbo down there at 26. But it is wonderful that up at the top of the finishing order after the first set of marks through to see it go Russia, Romania, Russia, United States, Russia, Hungary. The Hungarians, the Romanians and the United States getting in there, pushing there, in with a chance of the medals. And they remember take half that score, that combined score that they have here, that's half, so the gap becomes even closer. And here we have another chance to see that wonderful vault from Kim Zmeskal. The only ten of the competition. There it is. Well, you couldn't vault the landing. The twist was absolutely complete. Sometimes we think people have been gifted tens, but I know you believe that was one, Monica. Oh, that was really worth every thousand. I mean, the landing was great. She was still, she was upright and positive. We'll take a break there. We'll be back with the medals in a moment. Welcome back. We're just waiting now for the medal ceremonies to commence. And going back to that scoring, gymnastics, very complicated. The list of finishing you saw there will not be totally reflected in the top 36 because any one country can only put in three gymnasts. So the Soviet Union's... Um, Tohuz Vitana, for example, and Galieva, who finished 8th and ninth, won't qualify for the top 36. But the really exciting thing is you take the top 7, and there is only 0.5 between them. Those marks are half to carry through to the individual competition, so there'll only be 0.25 between Kim Zmeskal in 7th place and Svetlana Boginskia 
at the top of the table. And point two five, really, you could make up very easily indeed, Monica. Oh yes, I think that this really is going to be the most exciting. Uh, individual women's world championship that we've had in in many many years because it could be uh, Romania, the Soviet Union, or America. And back come the gymnasts. You'd certainly think that the Americans had won gold. And I really feel sorry for little uh, Melissa V. Shu, blew her bar exercise, and probably cost the Romanians um, the bronze medal. But she really can't blame herself. Ladies and gentlemen, the award ceremony for women's team. That probably dropped Romania to bronze medal position. The gold medal will be presented by. Ladies and gentlemen, the gold medalist and the world champion for the women's team with a score of 396.055. Mesdames et messieurs, avec un total de 387.055, la médaille d'or des championnats du monde de gymnastique par équipe est remise à the Soviet. So the Soviet Union carrying on their great tradition of gold medals in the team event in the World Championships. But I wonder whether they'll be there next time. Everything changing so fast and it was very interesting to hear Yuri Titov, the Russian president of the International Gymnastics Federation, saying how Perestroika had affected gymnastics in Russia, he wasn't all that happy about it. He mentioned, for example, that they only had 300,000 beginners last year going into their gymnastics program as against 700,000 on average per year for the last 10 years. Most countries would give anything to have 300,000 going into a gymnastics program, but that is what the Soviet supremacy has been based upon an incredible depth of talent all over the country. Well, perhaps the uh, Yuri Titov and the Soviet gymnasts might appreciate what we've all felt like the rest of the world for the last few years. He can join us. But a great triumph for them. Led by the reigning world champion, Svetlana Boginskia. There she is on the extreme right, towering over the other gymnasts. Chairman of the local organizing committee for the 26th World Gymnastics Championship. La médaille d'argent sera remise par M. Jack Barbrick, chairman du comité d'organisation local de ce 26 e championnat du monde de gymnastique. Ladies and gentlemen, the silver medalist Up go the chairs. And there's Mary Lou Retton. The queen of American gymnastics. There to cheer the team on. That's certainly their greatest success since hers in 1984.
And I bet there'll be a few wet eyes in the stadium tonight from the American mums and grandmas who've come along to see their children and grandchildren. Brilliant performance by the youngsters. And who knows what the individual apparatus events might bring. There's no way that the American crowd can destroy the resolve of the Soviets, but they certainly can give a lift to their own performers. And these girls are really on tremendous form. Romanians, second in the last World Championships, slipped to third. I think that's very sad that they've had to lose a placing in world ranking, but I think what isn't sad is that after the revolution, the Romanian gymnasts seem much more relaxed. They all say that they were never forced to work hard under the last regime, but they certainly look, look a happier troop of girls than before. Christina Bontas. And she's got a lot to look forward to this week. She's just... Uh, Point one when the marks are halved behind Svetlana Boginskia in the individual rankings. So Romania could see gold yet. Always when the two team competitions decided, Monica, you really feel the championships are off and running and underway. The first couple of days a bit slow with the compulsory exercises. Very much a part of the championships, very necessary to prove the competence in those. But we've now seen the voluntary exercises for the first time and wonder now what they're going to add into them when we get to the apparatus finals. Yes, I think that uh, very much a warm-up. Hugs and kisses all round, all the effort, all year, worthwhile in the end.